Hello and welcome to this demonstration of basic voice audio editing using the Audacity open source program. I'm recording this on a Windows machine here at home, but the software is also available for Mac and for Linux. Never used it on Linux, but it looks the same on Mac except for the, you know, the buttons to open and close the windows. First thing to do when you open Audacity, you should see a screen like this. Very, very much like this, whether you're in Windows or in Mac. Macintosh OS X. To give you uh, an idea of what here, basic transport controls here. These are universal icons that you'll see on a lot of software as well as hardware. This is a play button and that's the square is usually a stop. And you'll also notice there are little, little hints there. Put your mouse over it and you'll see what it is. This is pause. That controls the recording process. Backwards, forwards, this, that, and the other thing. This is a little area with six different tools that you commonly use in editing with Audacity. This looks like a cross-section of a steel beam is the selection bar and that's what we're going to be using today. In here, once we uh, get some audio in here, this is uh, the area where the meters are that show the volume. On this side, a little speaker icon gives you an idea. This shows the pl playback level and if we were to be recording uh, with Audacity, which I won't be today, this is just a and a demonstration of how you would edit audio you've already recorded. Uh, we would see a meter for recording there. Playback certain volume controls and the program by default uh, sets these at levels that it thinks will work. And this will be using a couple of times. This sh in, in essence uh, shows how, side the, how large the waveform of the project is. Well, you'll see what I mean when we do it. As I mentioned, what, oh, and down below here, this is um, various pieces of information. Uh, these are recorded, uh, these are time, time points in the editing that we'll see to. And this is the is technical stuff. We're recording this at a standard 44100 setting for more, very common for audio. First thing we need to do is get the audio into Audacity, the audio that we've already recorded. Maybe on an SD card. You may have used a USB cable to transfer it to the computer. And I have installed the, mm, excuse me. And what we want to do is import and import audio. First thing that we want to do. Now I have a, I've recorded a short piece earlier. I realize now that it would be nicer if somebody else's voice was doing it so you can hear the difference of this demonstration. But the name of the file, I'm going to import a WAV file and it's called Audio Editing Source. Whatever you have saved it as. Can open it up. Oh, I have to select it, don't I? Okay. And this will come up, and this is a very important warning. And in essence, I just want to explain two things. You're actually going to be working with a, an instruction file. That's the Audacity, the Audacity file. It has an AUP extension, basically a text file. We never look at it, but it has the instructions on, for everything that you do with the audio. And then there is a folder that's created every time you start a new project and that has the actual audio itself, the audio signals itself. So you want to be sure to um, have all of those set up. This comes up when you go to import and you have some choices down here. You can make a copy of the file or files that you are going to be working with in Audacity and that's, that's highly recommended. I think that is the safest thing to do because then you've got a copy of your recording in Audacity, if something happens when you're working with Audacity, you can always go back in and re-import the original audio. So I'm going to leave it as the de at the default setting. And this is what's been imported. We can see across the top here, timeline, these are in seconds right now. Uh, There's almost a minute of audio that I've recorded. And it's, it's in stereo, stereo tracks. But this is the waveform. It's showing the uh, loudness, the volume, and since it's st stereo tracks, but it was just a single uh, mono recording, so they're they're both the same. Let's listen to a little bit here. I wanted to take this opportunity to share an article. It must be here somewhere. Oh, oh, here it is. Okay, There's an article about the recording studio that. 
Okay, well basically that uh, that's the recording and I yeah, I made it noisy some things to edit out and I hope you can see how clearly that it how clear it is, how easy it is to do. I mentioned these tools you can zoom in, you can zoom out. When you first import audio, normally it will show the entire audio. If this was a 10-minute piece of audio we'd imported, well, they would be uh, all condensed, and it would be 10 minutes up here. But this is a pretty short one. And the reason that you want to do this, I can zoom in or whatnot, as you can see, the waveform is changing. And particularly when you're trying to do some very fine editing and really trying to get some sounds out or make the sound really flow, flow really smoothly, you'll want to be zoomed in quite a bit. And again, anytime you want to see the whole project, you can you can do that. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and zoom in a little bit. And I want to go, yeah, that's probably too much right now. I noticed at the beginning I started an introduction, then I rustled some papers or whatnot. I don't want that. So let's, uh, let's listen again. I wanted to take this opportunity to share an article. It must be here somewhere. Oh, oh, here it is. Okay, There's an article about. I wanted to take this opportunity to share. Well, that's interesting. I, I listened, um, and I think this takes us to an article. Now, I. I'm using a mouse. I just uh, left clicked, standard click, and dragged. I've got the selection tool here. Let me get rid of the selection there. I've got the selection tool here. Right now I'm left clicking my mouse and then I drag this to highlight an area that I want to edit. Now I do a couple of strategies. I have done a lot of edi editing with Audacity and with other programs, so I don't always check to be sure I've got the right thing selected because I can undo. I can uh, can undo the last step. Basically, con Control Z is the shortcut, or Command Z if you're using a Mac, and those are the most wonderful tools that exist. <laughs> Not, well, I think for as for my audio editing, yes. So I'm going to see if this works out. I th I was listening, watching, and listening, and I think that's the end of it. Let me just we can play the selection before we do any uh, editing. An article okay. must be here some. Oh, okay, that was a little early there. So. Okay. Must be here somewhere. Oh, oh, here it is. Okay. Okay. And now I can do a couple of things. I can go to edit and boop, 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 somewhere. I use keyboard shortcuts. Somewhere, somewhere in there we cut it. So at any rate, I'm just going to use the delete button, uh, delete key on the keyboard, and that selected area is gone. Let's hear from the beginning how it sounds. I'll go back to the beginning of the track. I wanted to take this opportunity to share an article, an article about the oh, article appeared twice. So let me uh, zoom in a little bit more again. I want to find out where that is. I wanted to take this opportunity to share an article, an article about. Okay, I think we wanted opportunity to share share an article about um, an article okay let's uh, go back to the beginning and I wanted to take this opportunity to share an article about the recording studio that the radio labs you know, I should put now I could have cleaned that up some more but I know I know what's coming up so we'll uh, we're gonna be doing some major editing in a bit. I wanted to take this opportunity to share an article about the recording studio that the radio labs... You know, I should put this down, shouldn't I? Yeah. I wanted to share a little bit about the audio studio that radio labs Jad Ab Abumrad... Okay, well, let's move that there, and it's going to play from there. I should put this down, shouldn't I? Yeah. Okay, so that's... Um, Actually, we can probably get rid of all of the beginning. You can see this is a little rustling. And take that back. This is what we're going to delete. 
I wanted to take this opportunity to share an article about the recording studio that the Radio Labs. I should put this down, shouldn't I? Yep. There we go. So I'm press the delete key and let's play it from the be new beginning. I wanted to share a little bit about the audio studio that Radio Labs Jad Ab Abumrad. Abumrad? That Radio Labs. Okay. Uh, doesn't this his name doesn't flow Abumrad. Up my tongue. Abumrad? That Radio Okay. The audio studio that Radio Labs Jad the audio, the audio studio, studio that. that audio studio that and I think that's our point to begin in Radio Labs Jad Ab Abumrad Abumrad that Radio Radio Lab no oh, I got re got moved over get rid of that that Radio Labs Jad Ab Abumrad Abumrad and let's go back to the beginning. I wanted to share a little bit about the audio studio that Radio Labs Jad Abumrad has in his home. And this is the home studio and is featured in Wired magazine this month. And they have a couple of pages showing some of the equipment that he has. The guy's amazing. Listen to Radio Lab. And you can listen online at radiolab.org. Radiolab.org. At radiolab.org, radiolab.org, radiolab. And I think I've got that. You can listen online at radio. And you can listen online at radio. Uh, I started to say WNYC, but I just want to do the radio lab. And you can listen online at radiolab.org or wnyc.org. And that's it for this week. That's it, and that's it for this report. And now back to you. Okay, well, um, we came to the end. This is the end of it here. Remember, I have zoomed in using the magnifying glass. And <laughs> there's a phone going off or ringing in my. But I'm not going to answer right now. We will listen to it in the background. Some of the equipment that he has. The guy's amazing. Listen to Radio Lab, and you can listen online at radiolab.org or wnyc.org. And that's it for this week. That's some of the equipment that he has. The guy's amazing. Listen for this week. That's it, and that's it. Okay. Listen online at radiolab.org or wnyc.org. I see that org. And I think these are the false starts. Line at radiolab.org or wnyc.org. And that's it for this report. And now back to you. Need that ending stuff. So we have now a piece that started out being a minute with all the mistakes and whatnot that I made, down to 24 seconds or so. You'll notice that. Uh, oh, what I have not been doing. I almost need to redo it. Save your project. Save it as. Now, this is reminding you that you're saving an Audacity project file. That's a .aup extension. Click on OK. I have a folder called Coiled Projects. And why it's not showing up in there, audio editing source as a project name. Let me call it... Uh, Audacity demo. Okay, so we've got that saved now. Should do that often. Should do that very, very often. Now let's play the full 24 seconds. Let's make sure we're at the beginning. I wanted to share a little bit about the audio studio that Radio Labs Jad Abumrad has in his home. And this is the home studio, and it's featured in Wired magazine this month. And they have a couple of pages showing some of the equipment that he has. The guy's amazing. Listen to Radio Lab, and you can listen online at radiolab.org or wnyc.org. And that's it for this report. And now back to you. Okay, just listening to that, even though it's full extension, I heard breath. I want to get rid of, and or wnyc.org. And that's it for this report. And now. 
Now, I would like to adjust some volumes. You'll notice that this one section where I said the guy is really amazing is a lot louder. What this is showing is the amplitude, the volume. And it it just is not as smooth. Watch the meter up here. Showing some of the equipment that he has. The guy's amazing. Listen to Radio Lab. And so there is a way that we can easily correct that. And this comes with time. And if I'm close to the deadline, I might not fix it all that much. This is an example of using the effects up here. This is the effects drop down menu and goes way off the screen of this recording, although I can see a whole bunch on my screen at home. I'm just capturing a part of it. And what we're going to do here is adjust the volume. That's the amplify. amplify. You can amplify positively or negatively. So amplify does ne it's amplification, and it does not necessarily mean you're making it louder. So I'm going to take it down, and just for the sake of time, I think about 5 minus 5 will do it. And look at the waveform. And I see that as soon as when I clicked OK, the equipment that he has. The guy's amazing. Listen to Radio Lab. And you can listen online at radiolab.org or wnyc.org. And that's it for and that's it for Duke. Uh, the voice, the presence is going to be different, but we can at least uh, make the volume not quite so different. And that, uh, da, 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 da. I'm not going to take it down that much more, but take it down again. And this is trial and error. That's nothing magical about it, just uh, over time. IC.org. And that's it for this report, and now back to you. Okay, so we've got our complete piece there. Now, da -da -da -da, let's go back to make sure it's at the beginning. Save it, save project, and should have been doing that every time. What's going to happen in case the program crashes, which it sometimes does, or the computer, or who knows what might happen, uh, you can always reload the project that is in the state or the condition that was in the last time you saved it. So if you get in the habit of saving often, uh, you wouldn't have to recreate too many effects. Now, the audio cannot be played back. It's not a WAV file. It's not an MP3 file yet. We want MP3 files for the news projects. So I go to File, and I'm going to Export. And this some information that's in the folder there. Uh, calling it an Audacity demo, the default is, or the la the default is, and the last thing I had done was save a WAV file. But again, I I would save the WAV file if I wanted to keep a high quality master that I might need to edit again. Uh, but otherwise, we want to make sure it's in MP3. And then you've got some options here for MP3. I usually stick with the default for voice, 128 kilobits per second. And joint stereo, I'll leave it as it is. To save some space, I just said I would. 96, I might go to 96 kilobits per second. Constant, click OK. And then I click Save. Another window comes up. This is for the metadata. Um, iTunes and other excuse me iTunes and other mp3 players track title um, audacity demo and album title would be audio tutorials and Track number, don't put in, uh, oh, you can fill all those in depending on how the player is set up. 2014, and a genre, you can either, uh, there'll be a pull down menu coming up. Uh, let's see, education training, I don't see, well, we can always say, or you can type in your own, so good training. And I like it, so I can save it. Screen come up. And we should have an MP3 file saved. It was that fast. And so let's take a look in. Oops, take a look over here. That's right. You're just seeing a portion of the screen, aren't you? So um, anyway, we have very, very successfully saved it. Saved it under music, under coil projects, 
uh, Sequoia Project's Audacity MP, Demo MP3. I wanted to share a little bit about the audio studio that Radiolab's Jad Abumrad has in his home. And this is the home studio and is featured in Wired Magazine this month. And they have a couple of pages showing some of the equipment that he has. The guy's amazing. Listen to Radiolab. And you can listen online at radiolab.org or wnyc.org. And that's it for this report. And now back to you. And that'll be it for this uh, that tutorial. Hopefully it's been useful to you. Be sure to let me know if you have any questions.